Hi. <clears throat> Hello everyone. So this will be the part two of immune manipulation in leprosy. I hope you have gone through the first part of the video in which we talk about what happens when the M. leprae bacilli enters the human body and how does our immune system react to it. In the previous part, I had discussed the activity of innate immune system and the acquired immune system. And since that video was getting very long, I wanted to discuss it in two parts so that once and for all our concepts about the immunological aspects of leprosy is clear. So the motive of making this video or rather the, these two videos is so that we can compile all nearly all the information about immune manipulation or immune regulation by the M. leprae bacilli and why does we have a spectrum of disease in leprosy. Why do we have that ridley joplin spectrum in, 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 in an individual? Why the same bacteria will present as a tuberculoid pole in one patient while in another patient can have a lepromatous pole? So uh, to develop a good understanding about it, we must know how, uh, how this kind of manipulation, this kind of keeping the immune system in check happens in the presence of M. leprae bacilli. And in this specific second part of the series, we will be discussing how M. leprae manipulates our immune system so that it can have a state of immune unresponsiveness. Okay, So that the immune system is not able to effectively find the bacilli and kill it. The main motive of immune system is to destroy the bacilli, okay? But in lepromatous pole, that destruction doesn't happen and the bacilli lives and multiplies at its own leisure inside the macrophage. So in this part, in the second part, we'll try to understand what actually happens in the lepromatous pole of leprosy. While in the first part, the first video, we were discussing more about immune-mediated damage and killing of the M. leprae bacilli. Clear? We have got the background concept uh, right and now we will start discussion about the manipulation of immune system in leprosy. So with, without further much ado, uh, sorry, further much ado, we start the manipulation of immune system in leprosy. Now a key concept to understand for that is immune unresponsiveness. That means why does the immune cells are not able to kill the M. leprae in the lepromatous pole. So if I don't mention anything, make, uh, just remember that we are talking majorly about the lepromatous pole of leprosy in which you have the multibacillary concept or the body is harboring so many bacilli but is still unable to kill the bacilli. And that has been termed as immune unresponsiveness. So let's recapitulate the first part of the video. So what happens is here you have the M. leprae bacilli and it enters the body. It enters the body and it gets presented by the antigen presenting cells. So this is a dendritic cells and this is a macrophage. Okay, so M. leprae bacilli by the action of dendritic cells and macrophage are going to be presented as a pathogen to T cells. T cells and T cells action of dendritic cell action of macrophage okay and upon activation of T cell this T cell will get activated to form T effector cells and these T effector cells will kill the bacilli will kill the bacilli clear and if the killing is effective it becomes a tuberculoid pole of leprosy if the bacilli is dead, very good, more than 95% of the individuals will get, will get into contact with M. leprae but will not develop a good disease and that is because the bacilli has been killed by T cells. If the T cells, the affected T cells are not able to kill the bacilli, what will happen is by the action. So let me just draw it here. We have the effector T cells. Effector T cells upon the action of TNF alpha will lead to inflammatory damage and killing of bacilli, killing of M. leprae. Also, if it is not able to kill by the action of interferon gamma, it will lead to granuloma formation and granuloma formation will able to sequester the, the M. leprae or trap the M. leprae in a collection of modified macrophages which is modified into epithelioid cells and the leprae bacilli is going to live inside a granuloma. Both of this happens in 
tuberculoid pole and this is termed as the th1 type of response okay but in this video we'll be discussing more about the th2 type of response okay so let's say that the t cells are not activated they are still the nice cell not the effector cells and T cell is not able to kill the bacilli because of many factors. So when because of these many factors you will have in under the action of interleukin 4, 15, TGF beta, interleukin 10, FOX T3 subset of suppressor T cells, suppressor T cells. All of this will lead to a formation of decreased immunity. This will lead to decreased immunity, Im decreased immune mediated damage to M. leprae. And what happens is you have a macrophage which has eaten the M. leprae. These are the M. leprae inside the macrophage. The macrophage is not able to kill the M. leprae effectively and thus you will have a Lepromatospole of leprosy. The bacilli is going to survive inside the macrophage and keep on multiplying, leading to a lepromatospole. And this is termed as the TH2 response. Okay, so we are clear. Just remember if you see the words interleukin 10, KGF beta, Fox P3, we are talking about lepromatospole. If you see the words like uh, <clears throat> TNF alpha or interferon gamma, we are talking about the tuberculoid pole. So, in this slide, I have kind of summarized the essence of the part 1 video. Okay, and uh, subsequently, now we are going to deal about the immune unresponsiveness or the or TH2 aspect of leprosy. So, we all know that MHC class of proteins are required for antigen presentation. I have told you before that dendritic cells, just imagine, okay, let me just draw it again. Okay, so these are dendritic cells, ah, dendritic cells and they will engulf the M. leprae and then present the molecules on the surface along with MHC and this MHC dependent or MHC co-stimulated uh, presentation of antigen is known as antigen presentation. Okay, so in normal scenario, a T cell will come and recognize this antigen presentation and this will lead to immune response, immune response, okay. But if any mutation happens in MHC class 2, the response will be decreased to M. leprae infection and you will have persistent of persistent infection and lepromatospole of leprosy, clear that the cells are not able to actively present it. So, in lepromatous pole of leprosy, because of macrophage and other factors, you can have decreased interleukin 2 and decreased T cell proliferation. Now, what is interleukin 2? Interleukin 2 is an, a cytokine which is secreted by T cells, activated T cells. And interleukin 2 further increases the production of activated T cells. So, it's a, it's a positive loop mechanism. Okay, so T cell will form IL-2, IL-2 will form more T cells. This IL-2 is suppressed by M. leprae and macrophage specific factors in lepromatous pole of leprosy. So there is decreased T cell proliferation. And remember in the part 1 of video, I said that interleukin 2 is responsible for bacillary clearance. Okay, where I was discussing about the activation of toll like receptor 2 and toll like receptor 4. In that slide, if, if you forget anything, go back to part 1 video and have a look at it. And you will remember, if you see these two videos together back to back, you will be able to understand a lot more. So because of that, the bacillary clearance doesn't happen and you have the lepromatous pole. Clear? Let's move forward. So, let me just get rid of all this writing. Yeah. So what happens is when we are talking about macrophage and other factors, uh, other cytokines like interleukin 10, which I've told that it's an anti-inflammatory cytokine, prostaglandin E2, leukotriene, thalidomide, these are all 
immune decreasing cytokines or immune decreasing factors and in the presence of these factors there will be decreased interleukin 2 formation there will be decreased T cell proliferation and you will have the lepromatous pole of leprosy clear on that now here enters the current you could you could say the current major player in immune unresponsiveness that is fox p3 expression okay in the presence of increased fox p3 expression you have increased interleukin 10 and pga2 leukotriene thalidomide and because of this increased cytokines you will have decreased interleukin 2 decreased t cell proliferation and lepromatous pole we are clear on that we are clear on the story Increase FOXP3, there, increase there will be increased anti inflammatory cytokines, there will be decreased IL2, there will be decreased T cell proliferation leading to lepromatous pole. We are clear? Let's move forward. Now, I told you that FOX, I have just told you that FOXP3 is a very important molecule to be discussed or a gene to be discussed. Now, what is the action of FOXP3? FOXP3 is necessary for T suppressor activity. So, in the previous video, the part 1 video, we have discussed about T effector cells. We have discussed about T helper cells. Now, we are going to discuss about T regulatory or T suppressor cells. Initially, they were known as T suppressor because their function was to suppress the immune response. But now, they have been termed as T regulatory cells because they regulate the immune response. Okay. So, FOXP3 is necessary for proper functioning of T regulatory cells. And we have seen that deregulatory cells are decreased during the reactionary episode and ENL. And when deregulatory cells are decreased, the inflammatory reaction will increase because it is now not being regulated by deregulatory cells. Clear? So, decreased Treg leads to increased inflammatory reaction, leads to reactions and ENL. Because we, we know that in type 1 and type 2 reaction, there is intense inflammatory activity and why is there an intense inflammatory activity because they are not being regulated by Tregs. Clear? Now natural Tregs. Natural Tregs are those uh, Tregs which are going to regulate the immune response in the absence of a pathogen or just the natural functioning of immunity. So when you want to activate the immunity, there are so many cytokines. When you want to suppress or regulate the immunity, you have majorly T regulatory cells. So, natural T regulatory cells are CD4 positive and CD25 positive. Now, this is increase in lepromatous pole. So, what happens is that in lepromatous pole, remember the last slide, in lepromatous pole, Fox P3 is increased. Increase Fox P3 leads to increase anti inflammatory cytokine, leads to decrease inflammation, leads to persistence persistence of M. leprae leading to lepromatous pole. Clear? That means the macrophage will store M. leprae inside but are not able to kill it leading to lepromatous pole. Okay? Anti-inflammatory cytokines like TGF beta and interleukin 10 further enhance the activity of FOXP3 and that is how they decrease the immunity or decrease the immune or inflammatory response against M. leprae. Clear? Let's move forward. So, TGF beta, I've told you, is an anti inflammatory cytokine. Let's remove everything. Yeah, TGF beta is an anti inflammatory cytokine and it is secreted by FOXP3. So, now you can see the positive loop. TGF beta will increase FOXP3, FOXP3 will increase TGF beta. Okay, and that is how the regulatory arm is increased and is able to decrease the inflammatory arm. And now TGF beta decreased by interleukin 17. Remember the video on pathophysiology of psoriasis. Interleukin 17 is a very important inflammatory cytokine. It is secreted by the TH17 subset of cells. TH17, interleukin 17, increase inflammatory reaction. So, IL-17 decreases TGF beta. Clear? Now, I have told you that interleukin 17 decreases TGF beta and increases the inflammatory activity. So, let's talk about IL-17. IL-17 leads to inflammation. Majorly, we have read about it in psoriasis and the pathophysiology. It is increased in tuberculoid pole. Why is it increased in tuberculoid pole? Because you have good inflammation. 
in tubercular hole and this inflammation uh, this inflammatory activity is able to kill the m leprae or at least fix it inside granulomas and you have a tuberculoid pole of leprosy it is increased in reactions why is it increased in reactions because again there is increased inflammation and inflammatory damage in reactions it can be seen in non th1 th2 subsets again because it it has a unique subset the th17 subset so i told you in the second slide of this presentation that majorly there are two responses th1 which leads to tuberculate pole th2 which leads to lepromatous pole you have another subset which is th17 and th17 is responsible for il17 which is responsible for inflammatory damage responsible for tuberculate pole reactions and enl it can also be the initial immune response so instead of a naive t cell let's label it as t0 naive t cell will become uh, under th1 response will lead to lepromatous pole sorry which will lead to tubercular pole in th2 response will lead to lepromatous pole but it can also have a th17 response leading to reactions and tubercular pole so you have a third arm which has also been described as a unique subset a non th1 th2 subset okay before th1 polarization takes place that means before it gets divided into th1 and th2 so it can start before that of th1 and can also occur individually separately from th1 and th2 now cd4 cells Remember when I was talking about the response of the body when M. leprae enters the bacilli, enters the human body uh, in the part one of the video. I told you that a T cell or a naive T cell under stimulation by macrophage and dendritic cell will form a T effector cell and a CD4 T helper cells. These are T helper cells. Okay. Now. Under the action of Th1 response, you have increased interferon gamma. That is a Th1 cytokine. So let's let's get this out of the way. Yeah. So under the action of Th1 response, you have interferon gamma, and that is responsible for uh, sorry responsible for delayed hypersensitivity reaction. And what happens is it leads to the M1 type of macrophage. Remember the first part of the slide. A macrophage gets converted to an M1 phenotype in the presence of interferon gamma. And after presentation of M1, you have major, majorly antimicrobial activity, inflammatory activity and a good antigen presentation. Okay. And this leads to a tuberculoid pole of leprosy. So remember, Th1 response leads to tuberculoid pole. In Th2 response, you have interleukin 4, which increases the antibody formation. Remember, in part 1, I told you that humoral antibody is better in, in uh, is more in lepromatous pole, but it is ineffective in lepromatous pole. Okay, so the antibodies would be more, but they are unable to kill the bacilli. So in Th2 response, interleukin-4 is increased, leading to increased antibodies and formation of the M2 phenotype of macrophage. And this is much more responsible for wound repair and fibrosis. In other words, it will lead to fibrosing damages of the various structures. You can you could see the skin damage or nerve damage because of M2 phenotype of uh, M2 phenotype of macrophage. Okay, let's move forward. So we have learned about the Th1 response. We have learned about Th2 response. We have learned about Th17 response. Let's see what actually happens. Okay, so Th0, Th0 is when the T cell is not divided or, or uh, matured either into a Th1 phenotype or Th2 phenotype. So that's a Th0 response when both of them occur together that is known as a th not phenotype okay so under the presence of interferon gamma or the th1 response it will form th1 type of subset okay as this is this one is you could say a naive t cell and this is th1 or a mature t cell mature cell 
or you should say maturity cell under the action of interferon gamma okay and if th1 is formed you have tubercular pole and the cytokines involved are tnf alpha inflammatory damage interferon gamma granuloma formation inos reaction and this will lead to no lepra reaction just remember that the bacillus are killed initially sorry bacillus are killed effectively and you don't have that many lepra reaction lepra reaction is more seen in the uh, borderline uh, leprosies bt bbbl and the subpolar lepromatous pole or the polar lepromatous pole while the th2 response take just a minute yeah while the th2 response under the action of interleukin 4 leads to a th2 phenotype okay and this is responsibly responsible for lepromatous pole of leprosy and the cytokines involved are anti-inflammatory cytokines like 4 10 tgf beta it leads to more phagocytosis but no microbicidal activity that means it will lead to more engulfing of bacilli inside the macrophage but not able to kill those macrophage um, kill those bacilli so macrophage will keep on accumulating m leprae and you have the lepromatous pole clear so by the action of th1 phenotype the infection is controlled and everything is very nice hunky dory but by the action of th2 response the infection is disseminated and spreads throughout the body and that is why you see a lot of lesions in lepromatous pole not a localized lesion as we see in tuberculoid pole additionally during the time of reaction or type 1 reaction or reversal reaction we can see that the subset of th2 gets converted to th1 just an additional information so we have now kind of revised what actually happens a t-cell under the action of th1 will lead to tuberculoid pole of leprosy a t-cell under the action of th2 will lead to lepromatous pole of leprosy done now we will see how m lepre bacilli manipulates the innate immunity or the immune system so that it is able to stay inside macrophage for a longer duration of time okay now what we are going to do is we are, going to, we are going to discuss sequentially all the parameters or all the key players in the immune in immune unresponsiveness seen in lepromatous pole so what are toll like receptors toll like receptors are just receptors which kind of recognize the uh, pathogens and uh, or the or the part of pathogens and that is how the t cell gets activated and leads to an immune response okay so when you have a killed M leprae, which is killed by either you could say macrophage or dendritic cell or T cell, when bacilli is killed, it leads to increased toll-like receptor 2 and toll-like receptor 1 activation. Okay. And when these two toll-like receptors are activated, you have a stronger immune response and you have a tuberculoid pole of leprosy. Clear about that? This is the same thing that we had mentioned in the first part of the video. The toll-like receptor 2 activation in the Schwann cells leads to Schwann cell apoptosis. So what Schwann cells do in, inside, sorry, when they are near the nerve, Schwann cell is going to engulf the bacilli and under the action of toll-like receptor 2 activation, the Schwann cells will die and this will lead to nerve damage. Clear? Toll-like receptor 6 leads to increased lipid biogenesis and because of that you see the foaminess of macrophage which we see in lepromatous pole, more in lepromatous pole. So you have a macrophage and because of M. leprae and toll-like receptor 6 activation you see increased lipid inside, you see increased lipid inside and you see the foamy macrophages that is characteristic of leprosy foamy macrophages coming to toll like receptor 4 they are increased by m lepre and it leads to 6 tnf alpha cxcl10 these are all inflammatory cytokine and while these inflammatory cytokines are there to kill the m lepre they also damage the surrounding structure leading to immune mediated damages Toll-like -like receptor 9 is responsible for recognizing bacterial DNA. So when M. leprae gets killed, the nuclear material gets released. It is recognized. The nuclear material gets recognized by toll-like -like receptor 9. And this leads to immune-mediated damage of the bacilli and the surrounding structures, which is mostly seen in reaction. So remember in reversal reaction, when you start treatment, the M. bacilli dies and releases nuclear material recognized by toll-like -like receptor 9. 
and then that leads to immune mediated damage so if there is any kind of you can say so many toll like receptors there are roughly nine receptors nine toll like receptors in humans so if there are any polymorphisms in toll like receptors you can have different intensity of immune activation or different propensity of leprosy so what happens is let's say i have good working toll like receptors so when lepra will add in, get inside my body i'll be easily able to recognize and kill i might have very bad reactions to lepra i might but still i'll be able to kill m lepra bacilli and remain in the either in the uh, you could say clinically asymptomatic stage or indeterminate stage or tuberculoid pole if i don't have good working toll like receptors i will have persistence of m lepra leading to a lepromatous pole of leprosy with disseminated leprosy and immune reactions clear so that is why snp that is i think uh, what short nucleotide polymorphisms i'll have to check that so snp in toll like receptors leads to variation in intensity in propensity of leprosy whether you are more susceptible to leprosy or not and the intensity of lepra reactions clear and it has been mentioned that toll like receptor 1 polymorphisms are uh, are responsible for increased susceptibility for reactions or acquiring the leprosy infection so these kind of polymorphisms are specific for different races and and uh, different uh, sects or not sects exactly different races and different population of humans so one polymorphism can lead to increased chances of that population acquiring leprosy may not be true for other population but all toll like receptor polymorphisms can lead to increased susceptibility to leprosy now nod like receptors so what is nod n o d nod nod is nucleoside nucleo side oligomerization nucleoside oligomerization domain okay so nod like receptor this is the second player now we have discussed the initial player which are toll like receptor now we have nod like receptor nod that is nucleoside oligomerization domain now these are responsible for the formation of inflammasome so inflammasome is a very good it's some not newer people have known about it for quite some time inflammasome is responsible for secretion of caspases majorly i think if i remember correctly 1 3 and 9 but i'm not particularly sure about it so it inflammasome leads to formation of caspases and caspases is responsible for apoptosis it leads to killing of the cell mostly it leads to killing of the self cell so let's say i am an immune cell i have recognized m lepra i have taken it inside i don't know how to kill it i will call inflammasome inflammasome by the action of nod like receptors they they will form a lot of inflammasomes and under the action of inflammasomes i will kill as a cell i will destroy myself so that the m lepra is also destroyed and this leads to a lot of inflammation that is why a separate term is used which is known as pyroptosis so it's an amalgamation it's a mixture it's a combination of apoptosis and pyro pyro means fire so this is fire apoptosis that means it leads to cell death and intense inflammation because it is an inflammasome clear now it has been found that in lepromatous pole of leprosy you have a lot of inflammasome so lot of inflammasomes in the system in the serum of the body in the in the blood of the individual but these are inefficient inflammasomes and they are not able to kill the cells harboring the bacilli the not like not like receptor protein 1 not like receptor protein 3 if any mutation occurs in them this will lead to inefficient inflammasome increasing the chances of leprosy clear so if inflammasomes are good they'll be able to kill if they are deficient or mutated they are not able to kill increased chance of leprosy so similarly nod to polymorphism same way nod to polymorphism will lead to decrease nod to activation decrease autophagy now what is autophagy autophagy is killing and engulfing our own cells so macrophage is going to engulf the body cells okay that is known as autophagy eating yourself 
uh, okay out of ag and when not not to activations decrease this decrease out of ag leading to sustained infection leading to lepromatous pool clear if the not to activation is increased the opposite happens and the death of cell occurs and you have tuberculoid pool we are clear on that so i hope i have been able i have been able to explain in 3 minutes how not like receptor acts in leprosy let's move forward to the third player in the series now now let's discuss the third player a third player in the series that is autophagy in the last slide we were discussing about autophagy autophagy is eating oneself and that happens under the action of interferon gamma okay so what happens is auto in autophagy you have a autophagosome it's a double membrane vacuole what happens is a good healthy cell is going to eat a wrong uh, cell both of these cells are the human cells or the body cells so that is why it is autophagy so if a cell harbors the bacilli not able to kill it it will send, send signals and then immune cells can destroy your own cells okay if there is any polymorphisms in tod like receptor 2 discussed before parkinson associated disease uh, gene discussed in the first video part 1 video and vitamin d receptor again discussed in part 1 video this will lead to decrease interferon gamma and when interferon gamma is decrease number 1 you will not have granuloma you will not have okay you will not have granuloma you will not have um Okay, okay. Let me remember. You will not have granuloma because of interferon gamma. You will not have autophagy also. And because of that, the bacilli is going to persist, and this will lead to increased chances of lepromatous pool. So now remember how different players are acting at different stages. In one body, in one infection, I'm not saying that all of these players are acting, but these are the steps where M. leprae. uh can we can persist because of problems in these steps so in one individual all of this can act or one of this can act leading to persistence of infection forming a lepromatous pool of leprosy okay when autophagy of m lepre containing macrophages okay so you have a macrophage and in this you have a lot of m lepre when autophagy occurs of this macrophage it leads to increase in interleukin 10 and interleukin 10 further is it's i told you before interleukin 10 is an anti inflammatory cytokine it leads to decrease immune response and decrease immune response will lead to lepromatous pool of leprosy clear because the bacilli is not able to be killed by uh, immune immunity let's move forward so we have discussed tod like receptor not like receptor and autophagy so apoptosis of apoptosis is a programmed cell death that means this cell has decided that i will not be able to survive let me get out of the equation so i told you about autophagy now we'll discuss about apoptosis apoptosis is more seen in tuberculate pool than in lepromatous pool why in lepromatous pool the macrophage is surviving it's not killing itself it's not destroying itself okay so in lepromatous pool we see less of apoptosis in tuberculoid pool we see more of apoptosis and we are talking about apoptosis of immune cells it has been seen that clofazamin can induce apoptosis in macrophages so if you have a macrophage in lepromatous pool not able to kill uh, kill the bacilli not able to destroy itself also under the action of clofazamin it can undergo apoptosis and destroy itself killing the m lepre in between so it has been shown that clofazamin can induce apoptosis it, apoptosis is also increase in enl remember so much inflammatory damage is occurring so much inflammation is occurring in enl that apoptosis is justifiably increased so when this uh, when macrophages and we are talking about new macrophages which are not infected when they engulf the destroyed m lepre containing macrophage they secrete interleukin 10 and tgf beta why let's say i am a macrophage i don't know what is m lepre i see a, see portions of a destroyed macrophage i will think that why is my immunity damaging my own cells i need to stop it so i'll increase interleukin 10 i'll increase tgf beta so that they both can go and decrease inflammation 
but I don't know that the other macrophage has been destroyed because it has M. leprae. So I am decreasing the immunity, allowing the pathogen to persist, causing increase in infection, leading to lepromatospore. Now we understand. Again, around the nerves, M. leprae decreases MEPK, ERK12, leading to demyelination, leading to further nerve damage. Remember that the uh, decrease in myelination will always lead to further nerve damage. Myelination is protective. Okay. So, I hope you have understand the fourth player, apoptosis. Fifth player, complement cascade. So, just in brief, we are going to discuss. You have lot of complement particles like C3A, C C3A, C3B, C5. Okay. And if I remember correctly, I may be wrong. A portion of C5, I don't remember, C5A to C9 forms a complex which is known as MAC, which is membrane attack complex. So what happens is, if you have an immune cell or any cell for that matter, which is coated by C3B, sorry, so C3, which is a part of opsonin, we have discussed this in very brief in part 1. The membrane attack complex will attach to the membrane of the cell, which it wants to destroy and it leads to destruction of that cell. Okay. So, under the presence of lipoarabinomenin, and this lipoarabinomenin is from M. leprae, it leads to complement activation. This is the normal pathology, normal physiology of immune system. But the immune system, the complement system, wants to kill the best, kills the cell which has the bacteria. But while damaging that cell, it can also lead to nerve which is lying just beside it, leading to nerve damage. Okay, so let's see, let's say that you have a nerve. You have the surrounding Schwann cells and M. leprae is being engulfed by Schwann cells, the myelinated cells. Now, complement activation will destroy these cells because it wants to get rid of the bacilli. But when the damage occurs, it also damages the nerve cell lying beside it, leading to nerve damage. We are clear how complement system leads to nerve damage. Okay. So, we have seen that C3D membrane attack complex lamp deposition is seen higher in LP and that is why in lepromatous pole you see a disseminated nerve damage. Disseminated nerve damage. While the same deposition is seen in the periphery of granulomas in tubercular pole. So, in tubercular pole, you have a granuloma, you have bacilli safe from any kind of issue and you have the lymph, the cells or the C3, let me just change the color, you will have C3, uh, yeah, you will have C3 deposition around it. That means any bacilli, if it comes out of the granuloma, will be destroyed by C3D and membrane attack complex. So, in tuberculoid pole, we have put the bacilli in a jail known as granuloma. While in lepromatous pole, we, we are going to destroy each and every jail, also destroying the nerve besides it, leading to, leading to nerve damage. Clear? Any polymorphism in the complement cascade will lead to increased chances of leprosy. Clear? Complement system is going to protect us from leprosy by inflammatory damage. If there is any polymorphism, it won't be able to kill the bacilli and you will have leprosy chances. Okay? Let's go forward. This is the fifth player. We will discuss the sixth player and that is the T regulatory cells. Remember that Fox P3, we have discussed Fox P3 in detail in the beginning of this video. Fox P3 is responsible for T regulatory cells. Now we will see how T regulatory cells help in persistence of M. leprae infection. Okay. So you have two types of T regulatory cells. You have natural cells which are persisting and present throughout. Even in the absence of any infection, these are CD4 positive, CD25 positive and they are present in thymus. Inducible T regulatory cells are those cells which are matured T cells, matured T cells and they develop in periphery after stimulation by cytokines. So, a pathogen comes inside the body, there is a naive T cell, it gets activated and convert into an a, a regulatory T cells and effector T cells. Effector T cell is supposed to kill the bacilli, regulatory T cell is supposed to regulate this action 
okay and when t regulatory cells which were not present before are induced these are known as inducible t regs if the t regulatory cells are already present inside the body they are known as natural t regs clear the main function of t regulatory cells is suppression of immune response it does so by inhibitory cytokines namely interleukin 10 tgf beta we have already discussed this while we were discussing foxp3 cytolysis that means destroying the immune cells so if immune is more active destroy the cells the immunity will quiet down metabolic disruption that means immune system requires a lot of metabolic activity and lot of metabolic processes for it to kill any pathogen t regulatory cells decreases that metabolic uh, disrupts or uh, provides hindrance provide obstacles in those metabolic pathway and thus the immune system or the immune cells is not able to act by its own uh, volition and you have the regulated immune system fourth is modulation of dendritic cell function and maturation remember that dendritic cells are very important antigen presenting cells and the regulation of these cells will lead to decreased antigen presentation, decreased immune activation. And different type of regulatory T cells can be differentially traf trafficked to, uh, to skin sites. That is why in subpolar lepromatospore or in BL Hansen's, we see different type of morphology, different stages of evolution of lesions because the activity of T regulatory cells is not uniform. It can act very good in one type of lesion while not so good in another type and that is why you have the variable morphology seen in lepromatospore. You are clear about that? So if there is unresponsiveness because of increased activity of Tregs, it leads to lepromatospore because the immune system is not active properly. Th9 subtype, that is the fourth subtype of Th cells. So we have discussed a lot of players in how does we how does the presence of M leprid decreases the immune activity. We have discussed about the Th1 type, we have discussed about the Th2 type, we have also discussed about the Th17 type. Now we will discuss about the Th9 type very quickly. So this is another subtype in leprosy. So you have a naive CD4 cells under the action of interleukin 4 and TGF beta which is the Th2 type. It leads to formation of Th9 cells. Th9 cells will lead to formation of interleukin 9. We are clear on that. CD4 naive, Th9, interleukin 9. Let's move forward. Now this interleukin 9 under the action of interleukin 6, 12 and interferon gamma. Remember interferon gamma which is the Th1 cytokine. This will lead to tuberculoid pole. I told you whenever you hear interferon gamma TNF alpha, think of tuberculoid pole. Wherever you will uh, learn about IL-4 and TGF beta, think of lepromatospore. So this is the how Th9 subset acts in the tuberculoid leprosy. It, <clears throat> it also leads to formation of interleukin 10 and interleukin 10 is an anti-inflammatory cytokine and it will decrease, it will inhibit the macrophage induced killing of M. leprae. Anti-inflammatory cytokine will decrease the M. leprae killing activity of macrophage. Okay, And when this activity is decreased, you have the lepromatospore. So the same subset, the Th9 subset, depending if it increases interleukin 9, it will lead to tuberculoid pole. If it increases interleukin 10, it will lead to lepromatospore. Easier to understand, very clear. Let's move forward. So interleukin 4 and TNF alpha and interferon gamma are going to inhibit the <coughs> are going to in inhibit the lepromatospore. So you have the formation of lepromatospore in the presence of anti-inflammatory cytokine. The major one is interleukin 10. Interleukin 9 can also suppress. The red arrow is suppress. It can suppress interleukin 10 and it can also suppress. So when this is decreased or interleukin 10 is decreased, the chances of lepromatospore is also decreased leading to formation of tuberculoid pole and that is how interleukin 9 leads to formation of tuberculoid pole, interleukin 10 leads to formation of lepromatospore. We are clear? Let's move forward. PD-1 and PDL one system. This is the eighth uh, player in our action in immune unresponsiveness. So PD is programmed death, programmed death and works similarly to apoptosis. 
the activation of the pd1 or pd ligand 1 system leads to cell death okay and we are talking about the death of immune cells so if i kill immune cells of course i am going to decrease immunity so if immune cells are destroyed immunity is decreased leading to persistence of infection and that is why this formation of lepromatous pole so the increased signaling increased activity of pd1 and pdl1 leads to persistent of infection because of destruction of immunity leading to lepromatous pole clear it also decreases interferon gamma now interferon gamma is a very important cytokine it's a th1 cytokine mainly secreted by macrophages and other uh, activated t cells and it's responsible for bacillary clearance that we normally see in tuberculoid pole under the action of pd1 and pdl1 system those cells are destroyed there will be decrease interferon gamma leading to decrease bacillary decrease bacillary clearance okay so let's move forward the ninth player in our and i think this is the last player okay are the b regulatory cells they function same as t regulatory cells so t regulatory cells will regulate t cells b regulatory cells will regulate b cells okay and there are different types there are majorly three types il35 positive which are seen in leprosy and it's proportional to bacillary index il10 positive which converts the affected t cells to t regulatory cell and enhances the function of t regulatory cells now what is the function of t regulatory cells decrease immunity or suppress immunity what is the function of il10 decrease immunity suppress immunity okay so by the action of b regulatory cells we are kind of developing lepromatous pole the third type is tissue like memory b cells these are also increasing lepromatous pole so remember that the tissue like memory b cells are also immunosuppressive so in lepromatous pole you have the uh, activation of b cells leading to formation of antibodies but these are useless antibodies as they are not able to cross the cell membrane and kill the bacilli inside the macrophage they are also responsible for formation of uh, il35 positive b regulatory cells 10 positive b regulatory cells and memory b cells and this is all of three are immunosuppressive and again this will also lead to lepromatous pole because the immunity is suppressed we are clear on that finally in the second part of this uh, second part of the video this video that you are watching right now we have discussed nine different aspects on how does the response system is decreased in in uh, presence of m lepre and you have development of lepromatous pole so we are going to summarize very quickly what actually happens in the tuberculoid pole and lepromatous pole this slide will be a culmination it's a summary of the immune action in leprosy it is a it is i think in my opinion the most complicated part of the presentation but i'll just go through it very fast those of you who have watched the part 1 and part 2 very diligently might make some sense out of this flow diagram i've tried to summarize the whole immune reaction in leprosy uh, the immune modulation in leprosy okay so you have a microbiocidal activity microbiocidal activity means m lepre killing activity it is more in the tuberculoid pole in the tt form and less it decreases as we move to lepromatous pole so more bacilli are killed in tuberculoid pole and less are killed in lepromatous pole and in between you have three stages bt bb bl so that is how ridley jopling classified leprosy spectrum as from tt bt bb bl ll by decreasing microbiocidal activity so here comes the star cell of our discussion the macrophage the macrophage will convert itself to m1 phenotype by the action of th1 clear now this m1 is responsible for increased microbiocidal activity increased inflammation and leading to tuberculoid pole we are clear on that this is under the action of interferon gamma by the th1 subtype i told you it's a th1 subtype the main cytokine is interferon gamma additionally dendritic cell by the action of interleukin 2 and interleukin 15 will also lead to formation of m1 phenotype 
Additionally, TH17, which is an inflammatory type of T cell subset, will also lead to formation of M1 because it wants more infl inflammation. Okay. And M1 regulates this stimulation by increasing the activity of TH1. So, if I have a macrophage under the action of TH1, I will form M1. And after forming M1, I will send signals that I want more M1 so that they can help me and create a lot of inflammation and destroy the bacilli. Additionally, by the action of inflammatory cytokine TNF-alpha, I increase the inflammatory activity leading to cell death, MM leprae death, M leprae death, leading to tubercular pole. We are clear on that. TH9 subset by the action of interleukin 9 can also lead to increased microbicidal activity leading to tuberculoid pole. Done. So this thing that we see right now is how tuberculoid pole sets in in specific individuals. If the macrophage gets uh, converted to an M2 phenotype, you will have a more of an anti-inflammatory response, less micro, uh, less, less microbe killing and more of a lepromatous leprosy. Okay. So, you have conversion to M2 phenotype leading to lepromatous pole under the action of interleukin 10 which is an anti-inflammatory cytokine. I have told you multiple times before, it's an anti-inflammatory cytokine. IL-10 will lead to formation of more M2 by the action on the macrophages. TH2 subset. I told you that formation of M2 is because of TH2. So, TH2 subset by the action of interleukin 4 and 5, which are the TH2 cytokines, there will be more M2. TH2 will further increase interleukin 10 so that more M2 is formed. Dendritic cells sign positive, which is responsible for internalization of M leprae. Internalization of M leprae will also lead to formation of interleukin 10. T regulatory cells which are responsible for decreasing the immune response will also increase interleukin 10 which is an anti-inflammatory cytokine. TH22 is another subset. This is These are formed by interleukin 17. It can also lead to M2 and the only reason that I have put that, it put that in green is because TH22 is an inflammatory subset. So what happens is if you are increasing the inflammatory arm, the arm will try to resist the increase so that it can keep itself under control. So, if any process in the body is started, the method to control that process is also started. So, TH2 increases the M2 phenotype by the action of interleukin 22. And again, B regulatory cells, which we have discussed in the last slide, also increase interleukin 10, leading to lepromatous pole. Okay. So, if we divide this slide from here, let me just draw it again. If we divide this slide from here, this is the lepromatous pole, this is the tubercular pole. Not pole, but tubercular spectrum, lepromatous spectrum. Now, T regulatory cell under the action of interleukin 12 can also increase the activity of TH1, that is just a part of their regulation. It can also lead to formation of interleukin 35. The B regulatory cell can also lead to, to formation of interleukin 35 and interleukin 35 will have a negative impact on TH7. Remember that this is a red arrow. So, it's a negative impact on T7. So, what is happening by these arrows? The regulatory T cells and regulatory B cells is decreasing. They both are decreasing the immune activity by decreasing TH17 subset. That is how they are decreasing the immune activity. Okay. And by the action of interleukin 23, T regulatory cells can also directly inhibit TH17. It doesn't necessarily requires IL-35. Okay. And I think I have able to summarize the whole process here. I'll just remove everything so that if people are interested, they can take a screenshot of this. Let me just remove everything. Yeah, okay. So, if you are interested, just take a screenshot of this uh, slide and this kind of summarizes the formation of lepromatous leprosy or tuberculoid leprosy, the formation of M1 phenotype, M2 phenotype and their control. So, if you remember this slide, you can write pages and pages on the immunology of leprosy, okay. 
so these are some articles which i had read i had read the ial second edition ial second edition immunogenetics immunology of leprosy pathophysiology these are some art, very good articles on immunology what i will do is i will put these citations in the description box you can always copy paste find the article and read them so that you can develop a good understanding of leprosy uh, the more you read about immunological aspect of leprosy i think the more interesting this disease uh, occurs and we all are leprologists so we need to know uh, leprosy in depth and we should know because with subsequent advances in technology we'll get newer drugs targeting each and specific aspects we have already seen the action of tnf alpha in lepra react tnf alpha inhibitors in lepra reaction or thalidomide in lepra reaction and we need we should be able to easily explain the action of various drugs and these are few these are in six articles not an ex exhaustive list there are multiple articles read through it they are very interesting the more you know what m lepre does to your the immune system or what M our immune system does to m lepre you'll be able to understand why we are still not able to get rid of this disease even after 18 years of elimination while this video is being recorded so i request you all see the part one of the video see the part two of the video see the pathophysiology of psoriasis if you want to understand the uh, rough workings of immune system and you will be able to make some sense about the immunology of leprosy i hope i was able to uh, make this process a bit easier to understand i know the videos combining with these two videos they are two hours long but trust me if you go through these videos just once it, you will have enough knowledge to answer all your viva questions answer all your doubts about immunity and leprosy write any short notes about any aspect of leprosy regarding the immunity as immunological aspects so uh, uh, i i hope that i have been able to simplify this concept and made it somewhat easier to understand if you have any doubts let me know now one important thing that i would like to share that we have just lost one of the stalwarts of dermatology last month so uh, his book is a seminal work on drugs in dermatology and i've been reading his book very diligently for the last six months trying to read every line and trust me it's one of the best books ever written in dermatology and i'm not talking about drugs in dermatology i'm talking about generally dermatology the general dermatology and uh, it's a huge loss to the fraternity that we have uh, we will not be able to have uh, you know newer writings from sir and uh, it, i thought i'll dedicate this uh, video to him and uh, he has helped at least me that in developing a good insight about the workings of the immune system workings of the drugs uh, in lip, in uh, dermatology and uh, i think at least i would be eternally grateful for him and i just thought that we should remember him uh, while this video is being uh, broadcasted the date would be 19th august so um, at that time i would like to just say thank you to him it's a good it's an it's an uh, it's it's fortunate to read his book and i think everybody should have a copy of wolverton and read okay so with that i'll finish the part two watch the part one watch both of these videos again and again and trust me you will never forget about immunology of leprosy you'll be able to answer any aspects of immunology if you have any doubts you can write to me via email on my email address you can comment your doubts any suggestions any queries you would like to like me to clarify something mention in the comments if you want to add to this presentation mention it if you want if you want to say that i have said something wrong then i would really like you to correct me and i will uh, make sure that i don't repeat any mistakes again if you have any suggestions how to make these videos better uh, except uh, making them shorter i'm sorry i'm not i cannot make shorter videos these concepts have to be understood in detail a resident should have the patience level of sitting and watching an one hour long video and making sense of these important concepts i was not able to do it when i was a jr because these kind of resources were not available and it becomes very difficult to make sense about things written in books that's why i thought that uh, uh, instead of doing any other drug i should do one video 
rather two videos now on immunology of leprosy and I hope that uh, it has made some uh, sense uh, regarding a very 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 complex I have not even touched 2% of the immunology of leprosy it's a very very complex uh, scenario to understand but I have I hope that uh, after listening to this video at least there is some interest about learning more about immunology in general and immunology of leprosy specifically with that i would like to end this part uh, i will release both of these parts together so that people can watch them simultaneously and make sense till then bye bye enjoy your weekend if you have any issues let me know adios